Ladies and gentlemen, as you guys know on the channel, I like to dive into the story of Call of Duty. And recently, since the launch of Modern Warfare 3, we've been diving into that. The ending explained, individual characters, season one, the story behind all of it. And you guys have seemed to really enjoy it. But there's been something that was introduced with Modern Warfare 3 that I have yet to talk about. And I think it's very important, and in fact, more important than any of those story videos that we've talked about so far. And it's the fact that at the very launch of Modern Warfare 3, they introduced something called the Call of Duty Cinematic Universe. Yeah, like Marvel. Now with this, it acknowledges the fact that they are tying together all of the different Call of Duty franchise. The biggest two are Black Ops and Modern Warfare. And today, this story video is going to go in depth of the main points of crossover between the Black Ops universe and between the Modern Warfare universe. And essentially, the way to look at this is there are four main pieces of information that we have been given thus far that tie the games together. Now, there are some other ones like adding in operators into both games, but those timelines and stories behind those don't make any sense. The four we're going to look at today are how the stories between Black Ops and Modern Warfare are actually tied together. But before I get into that, let me first tell you about today's video sponsor. It is once again that time of year where you have to get that special someone a special little gift, or maybe you just wanna get yourself something. Well, I've got you covered with today's sponsor, which is partner and friend of the channel, Ridge. Now there's no better time to check them out because they are currently doing a holiday sale where you can get up to 30% off of your order. Simply go by going to the link down in the description or to ridge.com slash ink. If you don't know what Ridge is, they make the Ridge wallet. This one here is the hyper lime version and they work plain and simple. You push down at the bottom, your cards pop up at the top. On the backhand side, they have a strap or a clip that can hold your money. And with this one, for example, they also have another thing, the Ridge key case that can go alongside and match just perfectly that keeps your keys. Now, I personally use the leather version of the wallet, but Ridge has you covered because they have over 30 plus styles and colors. The wallets can fit up to 12 cards. They are RFID blocking. And unlike other big bulky wallets, they fit easily into your pocket and you don't look insane for carrying it around in there. So as I mentioned, there's no better time to check them out. Personally, I gave a ton of people Ridge wallets last year for Christmas and every single one of them loved it. So if you want to get one for yourself, get one for a gift, check out that link down below ridge.com slash ink. And right now you can get up to 30% off of your order. And on top of that, if you just click my link down below and either enter your email or phone number, you're going to be entered to win a free Ridge bundle, which is worth $4,000. So go check them out. And thank you, Ridge, for sponsoring the video. So the Call of Duty crossover, as I'm going to like to call it throughout this video, really started out with the launch of Warzone. That is when the idea of everything coming together in the entire Call of Duty universe really got brought together. And yes, we're going to be talking about that. But believe it or not, this crossover started well, well before Verdansk and even well before Modern Warfare 2019. And this stems all the way back to Black Ops 1. And if you like me diving into these older Call of Duty games and the in-depth story behind them, show me by hitting the like button. Let's see if this video can get, let's say, 4,000 likes. And if it does, I will continue on making videos like this one, showing you these tiny, small crossover details. But this one goes all the way back to Black Ops 1. And this very well may be the biggest one out of all of them that we are going to talk about because it happened well before Verdansk. Now, just to be clear, this is absolutely insane. This is an email from a person by the name of Ryan Jackson, an analyst within the CIA. And just to be clear, this email was sent after the events of Black Ops 1. And if we look at a couple of specific parts, it's a little bit mind blowing. It says, we are at an operational crossroads. The evidence amassed to date leads me to no other conclusion other than agent Alex Mason and his supporters, Jason Hudson and Gregory Weaver are clear and present threats to national security. Because of this, Ryan Jackson recommends the elimination of these targets. The question is, how? Well, this is where the crossover comes in. It says at the bottom, SAS has assigned the one Jonathan Blank as their lead operator. Though inordinately young for such a role, both MI6 and SAFs have assured us that he is a veritable prodigy and will not fail to meet the objective of this mission. 
I request leave to accompany blank, which is the same last name, which we are going to assume is Jonathan Price and his teams to South Africa to see to it that agents Mason, Hudson and Weaver are dealt with permanently. So in other words, they were planning on assassinating Mason, Hudson and Weaver at the hands of Jonathan Blank, who obviously is Jonathan Price. Now, if we look back through the history of Call of Duty, it wouldn't make sense for this to be the same Captain Price that is in any of the modern warfare games. Now, why you may ask? It's pretty simple. Captain Price was not yet born. However, what we do know is looking back to the original Call of Duty games, Captain Price was in those as well. This is the character that I like to call Grandpappy Price. Now, the other Jonathan Price that could potentially be the one that we are talking about within Cherubitas might actually be Captain Price's father. Now, if you don't believe me already that this is Jonathan Price that they refer to, the fact that he's an SAS operator as well as MI6 ties directly into the Jonathan Price storyline as well could very well be his father. But I don't think this is enough evidence whatsoever to actually nail down a crossover between the two. So after this, we didn't get more information and a big piece of it comes from Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. If you've not met him already, this is Imran Zakayev. <laughs> Thank you, Secretary Gorbachev. And thank you all for welcoming me with open arms. I can think of no greater tragedy than a home violated from the inside. <clears throat> the trust and love within a family is sacred. Apparently. Not everyone shares your beautiful sentiments. Now, of course, this is a younger version of the Imran Zakayev that we saw in the original Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, the same one that Captain John Price shot the arm off of within Pripyat. Now, we also know that that mission does exist within the current Modern Warfare trilogy, as well as the conversation between Kate Laswell and John Price told us that at the end of Modern Warfare 2019. Zakayev wants Barkov's throne. I almost buried him in Pripyat with Macmillan. That was the father. This is the son, Victor. But Imran Zakayev didn't just end there within this game. As we find out, he was the one that founded something by the name of Zakayev Arms. Yes, the name is a little bit ironic, but aside from that, he is the one that established that and then was taken over by his son, Victor Zakayev, who, as we know, had a big part to play within Verdansk. And that brings us to our next thing. Verdansk. In Modern Warfare 2019, Verdansk was kicked off with a new battle, an invasion of Verdansk that Task Force 141 members were sent in to take down because of the introduction of Khalid al-Assad and, of course, the Zakayevs. But by the very end, we find out that things didn't go very well in Verdansk and the destruction was imminent. But as we were foreshadowed at the end of Modern Warfare 2019, this wasn't the first time that Verdansk was actually destroyed. The city's under evacuation. Alcatala's got complete control. This place was nice once, but it's not anymore. East and West rebuilt Verdansk after the Cold War. And that is exactly where the next part of the story for Verdansk would take us, back to the year 1984, where we would see Verdansk during the Cold War. So this location in and of itself shows us the connection between the two. But it wasn't only that. Within Modern Warfare 2019, we had these Soviet bunkers underneath, which we were told were once again from the Cold War. Now, as far as the story of Verdansk in 1984 goes, it all revolved around a group of people by the name of Perseus, a group of soldiers with extremist views within the Soviet Union working within the government, just like we saw in the mission earlier with Imran Zakayev. And within that story in 1984, we learned of the story of Stitch, a main operator within Perseus, which some may consider Perseus himself. But by the very end of the Black Ops Cold War story and the Verdant story, Stitch was eliminated by Russell Adler. Do what you will. Finish what you started on Rebirth Island. My broadcast was complete. I have changed the world, Adler. In ways you can't even imagine. So this brings us to our next crossover. Perseus himself, because in Modern Warfare 3, when you go inside of one of the Soviet bunkers and one of the campaign missions, you end up finding a bunch of Soviet flags, Soviet memorabilia, but also you end up finding flags with the Perseus logo. And to be clear, within the raids of Modern Warfare 2, this was another situation where you once again could find the Perseus logo. Now you could chalk this up to the fact that these bunkers are old, they could have old Soviet stuff in them, and Perseus flags were a part of that. But I don't think so. 
and it's stated by Yuri within the story of Modern Warfare 3. The Kremlin is not behind these chemicals. That doesn't mean Makarov isn't working with Moscow. There are extremists in both our governments. Hmm? And as we know, the extremists in the government are referred to as Perseus. And the whole idea of Perseus in Black Ops Cold War was that there was some sort of Perseus agent within the United States government. But as my prediction is, I believe that Makarov is a part of Perseus in the present day sense. So to summarize, the important information that we have so far with the Black Ops and Modern Warfare crossover is number one, Jonathan Price going after Alex Mason, Hudson, and of course, Weaver. We also have Imran Zakayev, the early version of him within Black Ops Cold War, and then the old man version within the Modern Warfare franchises. Then on top of that, we have the crossover between Verdansk, Verdansk 84, and what happened there within the Cold War with Perseus. We also have Perseus insignias in both Modern Warfare and the Black Ops universe tying each other together. Now, it can go even deeper than this with even smaller details. And if this is something you would like me to dive deeper and deeper into and maybe look more and more into the Black Ops universe, you can show me by hitting that like button. But for now, this has been the crossover between Black Ops and Modern Warfare Explained. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Subscribe if you want to stay up to date on everything Call of Duty. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, peace. We are, we are reaching for the stars, but we're made.